Hi, I'm Larry McAtee, Ward 3 City Councilman, and what a delight it is today, what an honor really, to have three of our division commanders from the Oklahoma City Police Department with us to share some of their insights of what's going on in Ward 3. We have from the Will Rogers Division, Major Steve McCool. Steve, nice to have you with us. Thanks. Pleasure and then from to be the here. Hefner Division, we have Major Jeff Becker. And from the Santa Fe Division, Major Brian Jennings. Thank Guys, you. thank you for coming down and talking with us today. First off, how about giving our viewers a little bit of a biographical sketch of your background? So let's start with uh, Major McCool and we'll go down the line. Tell us a little bit about yourself, your career, and. Uh, Been on the department just over 27 years. Uh, came down here in uh, 1984. Um, spent five and a half years in patrol, uh, another almost five and a half, six years as a detective in white collar crime. Um, then went on from there, took promotional exams, uh, was a lieutenant uh, in what's now called CSI, um, and then uh, promoted to captain and I did some time in the field at Spring Lake Division, uh, worked at the training center at Hefner Division, uh, Bricktown, and the public information office, uh, and then I became the division commander at Will Rogers uh, in November of 2010. And how many years of experience on the force? Well, just over 27. Very good. And Oklahoman by birth or by choice? Well, I, I, I would go ahead and say by birth. Uh, we moved here when I was very young, uh, six years old, into Oklahoma City uh, in 1968. So been here quite some time. Fantastic. I joined the police department in 1988, so I have uh, just uh, over 24 years on. And uh, I was on the streets in Hefter Division, which is the northwest quadrant of the city, for about uh, six years um, and then started working on trying to get promoted. In 1996 I got promoted to the rank of lieutenant and was assigned to the old Oklahoma City Jail when that existed and was there for just under a year until that eventually closed and we uh, moved our prisoners over to the Oklahoma County Jail. Worked there for about another six months and then uh, got assigned out to the field and was a field lieutenant uh, for about a year or two. And then I went to become a supervisor in the crime scene unit, uh, worked in there, and got uh, promoted to the rank of captain. Uh, I was a shift commander in Spring Lake Division, which is the northeast part of Oklahoma City, on a couple different shifts. And then I became the public information officer for the police department, and eventually uh, got promoted to the rank of major. And I've been at Hefner Division since June of 2010 as the division commander. And Oklahoman by birth or by choice? I was actually born in Indianapolis, Indiana, and lived there till I was about 11 years old, and then we moved here. Well, great. Well, we're glad you did. Thank you. Brian? Uh, I was born in uh, Michigan, but uh, grew up in Lawton, Oklahoma. I went to Oklahoma City University, graduated in May, and started the academy in June of 1987. I'm sorry, 1991. And then um, graduated the academy and did my patrol work at Spring Lake Division. Spent my time there before I got promoted to lieutenant. I uh, did some field work at Real Rogers as a lieutenant, inmate processing, and then special events where it was just a great time there. And then got promoted to captain, uh, went to Hefner Division, uh, day shift Hefner and worked there for about three years. And then went over to police community relations, which covered um, the PAL program, our truancy program, our gang intervention mm -hmm. program, and worked there for about three years. Uh, I'm the new promoted um, major, uh, June of last year, and I'm assigned to Santa Fe Division with a little bit over 20 years experience. Well, that's great. As our viewers look in, as you guys look at the areas that, in Ward 3 that you're responsible for, what would you say is one of the key challenges that you and your officers face on a day-to-day -day basis? And we'll start with Steve and just go down the line. Well, I, I think the, in Will Rogers and specifically the area that we're talking about in Ward 3, one of the challenges that we have is, is the crime as it relates to juvenile crime. Um, the graffiti, uh, the gangs, and, and some of the things that uh, the, the crimes that, that they commit. And those are some of the challenges that we're tackling right now um, that we try to focus on. And that area that you cover in Ward 3 is basically right around Woodson Park. It would be a, a geographic That's correct. It. it goes from Southwest 29th to Southwest 44th from May Avenue to Portland. Major Becker, how about yours? I would say, you know, we take hundreds of thousands of calls each year as a police department, and uh, that requires the police officers to handle a large variety of situations in a given workday. And one of the frustrations for a police officer is they can't be everywhere they would like to be. So it's a challenge for them to uh, constantly go out there and provide the fullest measure of police service that they would like to. So 
that's the nature of police work. Uh, it's We're always trying to improve our service to the citizens and there's never enough hours in the day to, to get it 100%, but it's something that we work on every day. Well, there's two ways if, you, if you're looking at never enough hours in a day, you know, there's that working smarter, but there's also a, a manpower issue, isn't there? There is. We, we don't have enough police officers in Oklahoma City. That's the bottom line. We are running a, a police academy right now. We're in the process of hiring for a future police academy. So we've had a number of retirements over time and we're in the process of shoring up our manpower. And even when we get to our full allotted strength, the reality is that's still not enough. Uh, the city is 620 square miles, so it, it is our goal to eventually increase that so we can provide uh, shorter response times and better service. So you're hoping that people like me will see that need and say, hey, we need some more funds because not only do we need to keep our manpower at the current level and replace our officers who are retiring, but we really need to add new blood in addition to that in order to render a higher level of service. That's what we're hearing from the citizens when the police officers uh, are responding to the calls as, as best they can. Um, the reality is we could do more proactive work the more uh, police officers that we had on the streets. Yeah, as I was sharing with you guys before we got on camera, I had a neighborhood meeting last night and I asked that question because uh, we're facing the budget situation coming up here in a couple of weeks. And uh, unanimously, the folks said, hey, we are really happy with our police protection, but we'd like additional police officers out there. We think they're needed. So thank you for sharing that. How about from the Santa Fe Division? I'll piggyback off uh, Jeff just a little bit, um, but ours involves the Meridian Corridor. It's a very active little area with um, lots of different businesses, hotels, restaurants, and it's a great tourist attraction through that area. A lot of people come there and stay that area when they're there for the fairgrounds and stuff. So we're constantly working with um, providing them adequate public safety there with the thefts that occur. Um, it is a, a area that people try to target just because of the the volume of people who come there and, and out of towners. So our challenge there is to uh, work with the businesses and, and, and the um, hotel owners and, and work with them on a daily basis and try to keep that um, a safe place for tourists to, to come to and, and feel like they're safe there. And We feel like we've made a, a huge success there in, in the last past few months there. Yeah, I know you have and we really appreciate that because there's a tie-in, isn't there also between the uh, Meridian Corridor and what goes on at the fairgrounds with respect to the equine shows? Uh, yeah, you know, people who come to these different um, sporting events, the horse events, everything that comes there, a majority of those people stay along the Meridian Corridor there, so we definitely then want them to come back next year and, and feel like they had a good experience here in Oklahoma City. If you were going to give a message to the folks that come to that area to eat and to recreate, what would you tell them? How can they help? For one thing, help us secure all your valuables. That's the number one thing we tell people. Make sure you take them to your hotel room or, or take them inside with you. Don't leave them in your vehicle in, in plain view. Um, that's just uh, asking you know, a thief to come here and, and, and take it. We want to uh, be proactive on that and, and keep, the, keep the bad guys away from your car. You know, I've learned another thing. Uh, a lot of Oklahomans uh, have these things on their houses that are called garages. And I always thought a garage was some place where you parked a car. But I've learned that a lot of people park their stuff in the, in the, mm -hmm. uh, in the garage and park their cars outside. And then at night when they uh, go to, uh, you know, to sleep, they leave their valuables in the car. Is that a problem or is that just, am I, am I off in the wrong base? No, that is definitely a problem. It's kind of one of the tips that we, we tend to do some, some uh, shows here on City Channel 20 around Christmas time and we come up with tips to and, you know it's one of the things we say over and over again don't leave your valuables in your car and specifically don't leave them in plain sight sometimes you're in a situation where you don't a uh, female may not want to carry her purse in put it in your trunk put it where it cannot be seen but do not leave it in plain sight sitting on your seat in your vehicle hey let's do that uh, if you were giving a piece of advice to the citizens in the Ward 3 area that you cover, whether it's business or commercial, I mean business or residential, what would you tell them? How can they help you guys and gals who are protecting us do a better job? Well, it's, it's, it's a common premise in police work that we need the citizens to help us do our job. We can't be everywhere at, at every time. So the one piece of advice that I would have is know your neighborhood. Know the people that, that should be in your neighborhood. Uh, 
or around your commercial business. Know the, the, the people that have businesses next to you. And when you see something suspicious or that doesn't look right, call 911, report that so that they can, we can send an officer out and that we can look into that. So it really is knowing and being involved either in your neighborhood or in your business area of knowing the people around you. Major Becker? To follow up on that, when people call 911, we have a call prioritization system. Sometimes we, we talk to citizens who witnessed a burglary in progress or some kind of uh, criminal act and they were reluctant to call 911 because they don't know what the criteria is to, to use that service and they really should not be reluctant to call 911 because the dispatcher will listen to the information, they'll prioritize the call, they'll put all of the relevant information on the call, and that'll be assigned based on that prior priority to a police officer. So if they see something that they don't think may be that serious, they need to go ahead and call 911, it will get entered, and we'll still, call, we'll still take the higher priority calls first, but that can be entered and, and investigated uh, by a police officer. So to follow up, don't be reluctant to use 911. 911. Major Jennings. Uh, mine's more specific towards our, your neighborhoods and residential area. Get involved with your neighborhood association. Um, most neighborhoods have those, and if you don't, um, it's time to organize one. Um, that can be done through the uh, police community relations officer that's each, at each division or through the Neighborhood Alliance. Um, those, those neighborhood associations are so important. Uh, they help us out on a daily basis, um, being organized, knowing the neighbors, knowing the neighborhood. They also do a good job of helping out with maintenance problems that occur in the neighborhood um, through action center requests and just make the neighborhood better. Um, you can see a big difference on the neighborhoods who have those type of associations as opposed to those who don't. Do those associations work for not only the inner city neighborhoods, but also the, the neighborhoods out in the suburbs? Oh yeah, they work for every one of work them. Work for everybody. Uh, yeah, we've, we've seen success in all of them. And each one of you guys has a, a neighborhood officer who would come alongside and support that neighborhood activity, come to the meetings, share information, listen to the concerns and try to get that back to the officers in the field? That's correct, and, and also provide training to them as well through neighborhood watch programs. Fantastic. And so if you don't have a neighborhood association, get one. If you don't have a business association, get one. Is that correct? Yes. Oh, hey, we're getting unanimity here. That's good. <laughs> Real quick thing is a final thing. Uh, young person out there thinking about law enforcement, good career path, what would you say to them? I, I think it's a great career path here. Um, I, I think I knew in high school what I wanted to do, and it was, um, it was a, a career that I wanted to do to help people get involved with the community and I knew I'd be here for 30 plus years. It was just in my heart. I would just tell the young people though, just to make sure that that's what you want to do. It's not just a job. Um, I think most of the guys who get on this department know it's not just a job. It's something in their, in their heart and they're passionate for. Or in their heart, passionate, helping others. What would be one thing? Education. Do they need education? Absolutely. Uh, ed education is extremely important. I think as we talked before we came on the air that, you know, not just law enforcement, but really any job, if I was going to give advice to young people, is that you need your education in today's world. It's extremely important. Um, and it's becoming more important even in law enforcement. So if you have a, a, a heart for service, as to, to add on to what Brian said, to come into police work, um, and you want to do that, Get, in, get into college, get some courses on criminal justice, get that education because it's going to be extremely important. Hmm. Guys, thank you for coming down. And listeners, I hope you've caught the passion that these officers have. They are servants. You know, as we look at life, each one of us looks through a different set of glasses. If you're a bad guy, you look at police in one way. If you're a good person, you look at the, a police officer as someone who's there to help. Uh, as a Christian, I believe we should look at police officers as ministers of God who are placed in our lives to help us lead a peaceful and a quality of life. Thank you for contributing to that vision, and may God bless you and your officers as you continue to render service to those of us in Ward 3 in particular and Oklahoma City in general. Thank you all for watching.